Hi everybody. Today I will show in a short live demo how to use authentication and authorization within the backup software SAP Sesam. Have fun. Before we dig deeper into the details of the live demo, I would like to spend just a few sentences on the often heard question, what is the difference between authentication versus authorization? According to our experience, people tend to mix this up. You can see this kind of dialogue boxes on the screen, which should be familiar to most of you, not only from our backup software SAP Sesam, but also from a lot of other applications, no matter if it is an executable or a web application or whatever. These dialog boxes are acting like an entrance and, and someone is knocking at the door. It is your responsibility to ensure that the one asking for entrance is exactly the one he pretends to be. This is called authentication. In my example, you might look at the clothes and appearance to check that this is the plumber you are urgently waiting for. After letting him step inside your apartment, the question what he can do is simple to answer. He's a plumber, not an electrician. So the verification at the door, for example, checking a police officer's badge, is the authentication process to answer the question who you are. By authorization, it is restricted what someone can do, or better, what someone is allowed to do. During the next live demo clips, we will walk in detail through the complete process described in this graph in SAP Sesam. First, we activate the authentication, then we create a user and specify his group or role, before in the last step, we define his permissions. With authorization, we define by the role specific functionalities he can execute. For example, a restore user can only do restores, of course. And with the ACL settings, we grant or restrict access to different clients or data. Now let's start with the authentication and we start our graphical user interface. And as you can see, it starts without any dialog box asking for credentials. You are already logged in and that's the default of uh, our graphical user interface. And this is called the policy based authentication. This is based on Java rules, Java policies, and these are specified on the backup server. The name of the backup server in our case is the DemoFix 3. And this is the installation path. And we have to look in this file, the SM Java policy file. And here you can see that we have configured the all permissions. And with this configuration, everybody, every user from every client is allowed to start the graphical user interface and, and work with the configuration GUI and, and the backup server. You could specify couples of users and clients like this one, and uh, then you could define specific user and clients with permissions to run the GUI. From this dialog box, you can see how it would look like if you have configured a lot of combinations of users and clients. In our case, we will activate the so-called database-based authentication. And this is done by permission management under configuration. And here you see that we have the activate authentication button. And that's what we will do right now. You have to specify the super user and the super user password. So let's say, okay. Now we have some remarks on uh, what happens when we restart everything with authentication. And now we start the GUI again. And now you see that uh, there is now a dialog box asking for the login and we have our super user login and now we are in the GUI logged in with the super user. The super user you can also find now under permission management and here you see that there are now much more tabs. We have the users over here and the administrator which is from the group super user. Only one super user 
can exist in the environment and he's the almighty user who can create new users and can grant or restrict permissions for these users and therefore we can create here new users and we have also the activation over here the authentication activation and uh, this is now based on users in the database of the backup server however it's also possible that we can match with an external directory system like Active Directory or LDAP. It's all checkmarked and so all the external resources which are specified will be searched for possible users. Under sources we have an, an LDAP directory, could be an open LDAP or NetIQ, whatever, everything is possible. Active Directory is also configured, especially you can have multiple active directories or LDAPs as well. We have made the experience that some customers have branch offices having their own active directory so you can have more sources configured over here and you can change the the, the order of the sources because a specific user will be searched during the login process from top to the bottom. All the configuration processes and options with respect to authentication and authorization are pretty well described in our technical documentation. Here I have a browser window. We can open the landing page to our wiki, wikisapsoftware.com. Click on documentation on the landing page and then you see here is in the middle section, Sepsesam operations, the entry to authentication and authorization, the entry page to this topic. The next tab we will have a look at in this dialog box is the groups tab. Here you will find all the predefined roles and on the left side you will see the stack of roles. On top there is the super user who can create new users, who has full access to all and everything, which cannot be restricted. And when the super user creates new users, then it has to be assigned to one of these predefined roles. With the administrator and the operator role, we always have as a default full access, but it can be restricted by the super user. And with the backup and the restore users, we have the default that everything is denied and the super user can grant specific access to specific servers or tasks or media pools or whatever. As a next step, we have the external groups. And this is needed to map external groups from Active Directory or LDAP to internal groups. And uh, in our example over here, we have the test group, which is existing in our Active Directory. This is mapped as being at ad all administrators. There are a lot of users in this test group. And if you would like to log in with one of these users, it must exist as a user within SAP Sesam. And you can see that there are no active directory users configured because this happens automatically during the first login. And I will open a new instance of our graphical user interface and we will log in as a test user. And this is a user in the test group in our active directory. When we log in with this user, it opens a new instance of the graphical user interface. And in the frame of this GUI, you can always see the user, what it is logged in. You can see that it's the test user. If you try to open the permission management, you can see that it's not possible because it's an administrator. It's not a super user, so you cannot change any permissions. And now update the view in this dialog box and you can see the test user has been created automatically as an active directory user in the database of SAP Sesam. If you need more information, you will find references around here for a playlist with a lot of similar videos and a general overview of SAP Sesam. Thanks for listening and see you next time when you boost your SAP knowledge again.